through when the growth look good on you best believe they wanna screw now i've been trying to climb devil threw me in the dark baby don't be insecure you can still go make a mark like blow could never let them drain my soul now blow table turning like door knobs wow blow i think i'm about to set sail i'm a walking living legend walking with my chest yeah. now life keep dealing me cards i keep Yes, people, it's G, and we are back in the building. We are back with another video today. Just before we dive into it, you guys can see in the title um, already what we're about to kind of delve into. If you guys haven't already, as I keep saying, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you also subscribe to the Jerry James show where you'll find myself, Jerry and Roms and Ish as well, new member um, over there on the channel. Um, yeah, we're on the road uh, on the road to 250 subscribers. So yeah, please, if you guys can, you know, help out the channel, um, massive appreciation. Make sure you smash that like button as well. So today, um, wanted to have a conversation, um, little conversation in regards to Fabinho, as you guys can obviously see in the title, a little play on words there. But you know, <clears throat> all jokes aside, um, I think you know. This isn't even a case of, you know, it's about time we had a conversation about Fabinho because I think that conversation has been had already. Um, you know, we've spoken about Fabinho this season. We've spoken about his form, <clears throat> you know, how he's been playing and, you know, just, you know, against Brighton, you know, on the weekend in the FA Cup, you know, he came on another poor performance. Um, you know, he's he's recently been dropped uh, for Bajetic, um in the midfield. Um, so that kind of shows you where he is at, you know, currently at this moment in time. Um, now, you know, Fabinho signed um, from Monaco a few seasons back, you know, he came in, you know, he did, you know, brilliantly, you know, he was, he was considered one of the best defensive midfielders, you know, in the world. Um, he, he, he was he was really, really good. You know, he's had a, a few good seasons, you know, at Liverpool. But at this current moment in time, what we're seeing from Fabinho, it, it just isn't it, you know, and... You know, we're finally getting to that stage and a lot of fans are finally getting to that stage, you know, alongside Henderson and alongside a few others as well. He's not, you know, he's not the only one, but alongside Fabinho and especially this season, we're seeing, you know, a decline that is just, you know, horrible to watch, to be honest with you. You know, we're seeing him in games. He's just not really with it. He can't really keep up with the pace of the game anymore, which is very, very alarming, you know, for Fabinho and especially in this Klopp team because of how Klopp wants to play and, you know, how we um, play as a team and things like that, you know, doesn't really bode well for the future. Now, a lot of people saying, oh, you know, it's just this season, you know, we back to his best next season. I mean, it, it's very rare that players, you know, it, it happens, obviously, of course, to a, a few players around the world. We saw it with Marcus, Marcus Rashford, you know, over at United. Um, you know, he was poor for about 18 months or so. Um, and, he's, you know, he's come back this season. He's absolutely on fire. So it's not to say that it's beyond the realm's of possibility that he could potentially come back and you know be this destroyer that we you know we you know we once loved to be honest with you you know we were calling him the best defensive midfielder and with good reason because I feel that he was at a point in time and if he wasn't the best he was definitely in the top three you know in the world um, at the time alongside players like Casemiro like Kante you know Rodri as well um uh, it's uh, to be honest, I, I'm even lost for words because I, I just don't know what is going on, <clears throat> you know, with Fabinho. Now we've heard a little, f a few things here and there in regards to maybe his off-field life, you know, with um, you know things that might potentially be going on, which would be the reason as to why you know we're seeing this Fabinho at this current moment in time. But if we're just talking about on-field, um, you know, just how he's been, it, it's it's been horrible to watch, you know, absolutely horrible to watch. Um, and again, like I said, yes, I'm talking about him, but it's not just him. It is a fair few other players in the squad, but he seems to be the one that is really, really playing awfully, you know, this season. He's, I, I can't even recall a good game, you know. I can recall games where he's been better, you know, than, you know, he's shown in in 98% of the games that he's played this season. But in a general sense, you know, he would get a 3 out of 10 if that, you know, for the season because he's just been so off the pace and, you know, Bajetic has come in now and we're seeing what we potentially saw from Fabinho during all those years. Now, obviously, Bajetic isn't on a Fabinho level. It doesn't matter how poor Fabinho has been. He's not on that level yet. Of course, he's not. He's only 18, um, only, you know, started playing, you know, men's football 
really this season to be honest with you so of course he still needs time to get to that level and he still needs time to develop and you know all these kind of various different things and they're quite they're a little bit different in terms of um a midfielder i think with fabinho his role was more of that destroyer but someone who at the time was really really calm on the ball could pick out a pass and things like that whereas i don't really look at by like that i kind of look at him as more of a uh someone who yeah, he can put in the odd tackle and stuff like that. And that might just develop, obviously, with time. But he's someone I want on the ball a lot more because he looks really, really comfortable, looks comfortable in tight spaces and things like that. So they're a little bit different. For me, not to say Fabinho couldn't play, but I'm more comfortable, I guess, with Bajetic than I am with a Fabinho on the ball, you know. Um, but, you know, he just doesn't really have that destroyer to me anyway, in my personal opinion, he doesn't really have that destroyer in him. He's more of a ball playing midfielder. And that's, you know, that's absolutely fine. Everyone is obviously, you know, different. But, you know, with Fabinho, it's just, yeah, it, it just seems to be going from bad to worse with him. And as I said, you know, on the weekend against Brighton, you know, he came on, made that horrible tackle that he should have, should have been sent off for, if I'm being totally honest. If that was anyone else from another team, we'd all be screaming red card, red card. Um, so, you know, Fabinho is not exempt. And I do think that he should have been sent off, you know, in that game. Um, maybe even Canate too. But, you know, it it's just, honestly, I don't know what has happened to the guy who, you know, helped us win that Premier League, you know, helped us, um, uh, you know, win all these other trophies and stuff like that. You know, signed him after the Champions League final, you know, and it was like out of the blue, bang, Fabinho. And he was a really good player for Monaco. You know, he was in that Monaco team, Bernardo Silva, Gilles Mbappe, you know, um, Bakayoko, like that team that was so dominant in France at that time or in that season anyway, you know, he was one of many players who were key figures, you know, for that team. And rightly so, he, he got his move um, to a, probably a bigger club, um, better team um, under a better manager. Um, yeah, so, it, you know, everything seems to just fall in line. But, you know, we're seeing him this season and, you know, this season is very easy to criticise the team. I've Obviously, you've heard me already. I've criticised the team, uh, you know, enough times and Jurgen Klopp too. But, you know, I was seeing the signs and a lot of other people were seeing the signs from last season. You know, he just didn't really look like the player that, you know, who, f who first walked in through that door. Um, you know, the player who we thought, you know, was going to just go on and just, you know, continue to be that destroyer. And one thing, one thing that I always think is that we're seeing a lot of players now um, you know, Casemiro is a prime example. Uh, Modric is another example. Uh, obviously, your Javi's, Iniesta's, your Perlo's, you know, people of that kind of nature and in that kind of mould, who I thought Fabinho could reach on that kind of level if he had just continued where he left off. We're seeing with those kind of players, once they hit 30, they don't get worse. They actually get better. You know, we, you know, I saw it, especially with players like Modric. He just seems every year he's just gotten better and better and better and better. Um, you know, uh, Cruz, the same thing, you know, but we're seeing with Fabinho, you know, he's 29, you know, going to be 30, I think. Uh, and it's, he it just, he it, it, it just looks like he's at the end of his career, as opposed to being someone who should be really in your prime and move and going another level up, you know, that that's what we need to be seeing from Fabinho. You know, I, I don't think when we look at the ages, sometimes, you know, of course, you know, not everyone could be a James Milner at the age of 37 and, you know, doing what he's doing at this current moment in time. And I understand that. But, you know, I expected someone like a Fabinho to be able to push on from this level. And we're just not seeing it. The last two seasons for me, they last season was was OK. You know, of, of course, you know, the team did really well um, in terms of what they achieved last season. But in terms of his performances, yeah, like I said, OK, this season has been horrible. Absolutely horrible to watch. Um and I, I just don't know where we go from here. And, and hence the reason why, you know, we're going to see a lot of people saying, you know, they'd rather sell Fabinho, you know, in the summer, get some funds in. And we can potentially use that to get in a new midfielder, um, someone who's a lot more mobile, someone who's a lot more energetic, someone who can play under Jurgen Klopp um, in, his in his tactics and, you know, play the style of football that Jurgen Klopp needs from his team. You know, as I said, Bajcetic has come in and it's not like, you know, he's come in and he's been amazing. I don't think he has. I think he's been, again, he's been okay. You know, he hasn't done anything noteworthy or anything like that. But what he's come in has shown, again, that he's got that mobility. He's got that energy. Everything that Klopp needs for his midfield to actually work because we know that the midfield is an engine. That's what Bayer is showing at this current moment in time. And Fabinho has just fallen off a cliff. And, 
you know, it's, it is a case of where do we kind of go from here? You know, what do you do with someone like that? You know, we can talk about, yeah, potentially next season, you know, and he has been run to the ground. He's played a lot of games, you know, for Liverpool, especially over the last couple of seasons. Played a lot of minutes, rarely ever dropped. Um, I don't blame him for that. I blame Jurgen Klopp um, for that, purely because Klopp's not really a rotation uh, rotational manager. Plays the same players every single week, you know, if he can. Um, as long as they're fit enough, he will play them. Um, and, I, you know, I was always sitting there thinking, you know, we need to we need to start having, you know, these replacements. We need to start. We can't keep waiting for under Jurgen Klopp in his style and, you know, in the way that he wants to play. Whether Klopp sees it or agrees with it or whether it's a problem with, you know, the owners, whatever it may be. In that style of play, you cannot have just an 11 or even just a 13. You need literally like for like or you need replacements at the bare minimum who can come in and do a, a, a decent enough job, you know, when you play that style of football because that style of football isn't sustainable for a team of 11 to 13 players to play for so long. You know, it just isn't sustainable. You know, this heavy metal kind of football, it doesn't work for a long period of time. You know, something that could work for short periods. And when it does work, it's very, very effective, as we saw between 2018 and 2020. But once it gets out of that period, you can't continue. You know, it's not like a Pep Guardiola or a Mikel Arteta uh, or a De Zerbi, um, you know, Graham Potter's, you know, the Tuchels. They all have styles and tactics that you can play over long periods of time. It just, it really just depends on the form of the team, you know, and the players that, you know, who come in and out and you can swap players in and out, meaning you can see different players who obviously are going to offer you different things like any, any player or any team would want, but the team's ethos is always going to remain the same. You know, with Liverpool, that's never the case. You know, there's always a massive drop off from the first team to whoever drop, whoever jumps in. We've seen it. You know, obviously this season with Fabinho and Hendo, as soon as they've kind of come into games, Liverpool have looked absolutely atrocious, absolutely atrocious in games when these guys come onto the pitch. But the second you have a Keita, Thiago, um, Bajcetic midfield, again, not that they're doing anything amazing. They're not playing amazingly well. But as soon as they come in, that energy comes back. You know, the the um, the engine, the engine room, as they as they as Klopp likes to call it, you know, that comes back into play. And then the fact that these guys are ball playing midfielders then helps in terms of keeping possession, transitions and things like that. So I think when you're looking at Fabinho, do you sell him in the summer? At, you know, at this rate, you, you probably would have to, to be honest with you. You know, it, it is getting to that stage where especially because Liverpool's midfield definitely needs a bit of a rebuild now. Whether they can sell him, um, what I mean by that is that he will definitely have suitors. I'm not going to play that game of, oh, who wants to sign him? There's going to be a lot of suitors for someone like Fabinho. It will just depend on the price that we're looking to sell him for. But when you are looking at him, his current form for the last two seasons, you know, you're looking at a player who ultimately looks like he's on a decline a little bit. You know, it, 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 then it will probably depend on where he goes. Is he going to be able to get back up to, you know, his former self? You know, he's had a good run. You know, he's had a good run. Um, what I say about players is that not every player can stay at a football club for, like Jordan Henderson for, you know, as long as he's been here, 12 years or whatever it is. You know, no one, not everyone can do that. You know, not everyone needs to do that either. You know, I'm not looking for players to stay here from the moment they get here to the end. You know, this isn't Lionel Messi. That's different. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Messi, Ronaldo, Mbappe, probably only three players in world football I look at and think, yeah, once we sign them, I never want them to leave unless obviously they get worse. Um, a bit like Ronaldo. Um, but when I'm looking, you know, at other players, I'm thinking, you know, you serve your time here. You do everything that you possibly can within that time. You play to the best of your ability. Once you've reached kind of your expiry date, it is time to kind of move you on. You know, it's not a big deal. It's not, it's football. It's it, that, That's exactly how football works. You know, um, you know, you shouldn't just keep players because of sentiment, something that Liverpool Football Club do quite a lot. Um, they keep a lot of players due to sentiment. Um Obviously, that boils down to the manager as well. Um, you know, we, we sent Gruwich out on loan to Porto. I think it was to Hertha Berlin before that, you know, and whether he was good enough or not, we never really got to, you know, see that. That was a player that Klopp really liked, um, you know, when he was here. So it was quite baffling to see the fact that we did let him go to Porto um, in the end. Fair enough, you've let him go, but then you've not brought in anyone else. You know, is Fabinho supposed to play every single game? Is is like... This is where I get a little bit annoyed, um, you know, with Klopp. And this is why I find it so hard to, you know, 
have the conversations with people in regards to Klopp because I'm like, well, he's the one who didn't want these replacements. He's the one who thought, you know what, these guys are fit enough. They're able to do the job at the time. Um, so, you know, what, you know, what are we complaining about? But we're seeing that, you know, and I think Klopp's probably seeing that now with his style of play. These guys can't do this for five, six, seven. It just can't work. You haven't got a sustainable style of play, unfortunately. And if you haven't got that, you need to then consistently keep refreshing the squad. But because, you know, with Liverpool and the way that we do business, you might not be able to refresh the squad with potentially everyone that you'd want to actually sign. You might want to sign, you know, player A, but unfortunately, you might not, be, you might not always be able to do that. So... What I'm then looking for is, can you get player B or C? Can you potentially change up the style of play? Can you change up the way that we do things now so that the team in the long run will benefit instead of these kind of short bursts, which is what we're having with Liverpool and ultimately, you know, what we've had with um, Fabinho. You know, he had, like I said, he had a good two years, probably like, yeah, I'd probably say a good two years where you didn't question him. You thought he was one of the best easily, you know, in the world um, defensive midfielders. Um, and, you know, he was trotting along very nicely. But, you know, in the World Cup, didn't, I think he played one game against Cameroon, <clears throat> you know, when um, Brazil had already qualified and things like that. He's not really in favour over there. They'd rather pick players like Fred, um, as I say, Casemiro, Paqueta, um, you know, other players are, are, are going to play ahead of him in that Brazil national squad. No problem. But, you know, when he's over here at Liverpool, we don't even have the options like that. You know, who else can play in that kind of position? At the moment, it's only by Cetic, but he's 18. You know, he's 18, just signed a new deal and things like that. So I'm looking at him thinking, I mean, yeah, you can play that position. But at the same time, you're not someone that we can rinse out all the time. You know, it, it's going to be difficult for him to be playing. We're, we're not a club like... Uh, who are lower down, like a Leeds United, where they will throw these youngsters in, in, for example. One, because, yes, they might actually be pretty decent, but it's for the sheer fact that we can give you these opportunities. The spotlight is not going to be on you so much. You know, by touch it, unfortunately, you play for Liverpool. You have a bad run of games, people are going to want you out of that team straight away. You know, and that's how it works at the end of the day. Whether you like it or not, that's how it works, because this is a, a massive club. So we need the players to be performing at that level consistently. And if you're not performing at that level, then, of course, it's going to, you know, cause problems. And, you, you know, you're going to be questioned. You know, Trent was questioned as well when he had a few poor games. Now, again, we didn't have no cover. So, you know, Trent's just got to kind of just play through it. But I don't want to get into that stage with someone like a Bajic. I want there to be adequate cover. I think we should be looking at another DM, potentially even two or players who can play in that position so that Bajic isn't playing all the time, but he can get his minutes here and there and, you know, potentially then put him out on loan. That's why I feel will be he'll be best served if he goes out on loan, goes to a good team, gets some football, consistent football, goes somewhere where you can play, make mistakes, do all the wrong things. The spotlight isn't, we don't, you know, Tyler Morton, for example, he might come back in, so he might actually be an option. Um, I heard he's doing pretty well over there at Blackburn, but... You know, he's able to go to Blackburn. He's able to have bad... He hasn't played good every single game. He's had bad games. You know, he's had a run of bad games, actually, alongside Blackburn, um, um, Blackburn's form this season. But he's had bad games and he's been able to go over there. The spotlight's not on you. No one's watching you, Liverpool fans, anyway, week in, week out, where, oh, crap, he's played rubbish for five games. Get him out of the team. He's rubbish. He's this. He's that. Oh, he's too young. Why are we playing him? Blah, blah, blah. We don't want we don't want that for Bayer because I do think he's a very very decent player and I think he could become a good player you know in the future. But with someone like a Fabinho around at the moment, he's just not helping anybody. He's not helping himself mainly, but he's not helping the team. And that, and that's my focus is we need to then think of a solution for this situation at the current moment. You know, in time, you know, this isn't the Fabinho of old, and we need to then you know, like I said, start asking the question: What do we do with Fabinho? Do you let him go? Does he stay? Do you give him another season? A bit like Klopp, to be honest. I think the sentiment then pops in there is maybe you give him another season. He goes on the bench. He comes in here and there. Potentially, potentially, potentially. If we're, if we're able to still get our midfielders, then I'm not going to you know really be too mad if we were to keep a Fabinho. Um, I mean, if he's going to be poorer than this next season, then yeah, of course, if I could see into the future, then I would definitely say, yeah, we need to get rid of him now. But... I'm hoping he's not going to be this poor, you know, next season. So, you know, it, it is about what do we do, man? What do we do? And it, 
it's it's just going to be a conundrum between now and the end of the season. Um, especially if he keeps putting in these performances, I, I'm in no doubt that he'll probably have one or two good games. We are, or I can count on one hand how many good games he'll probably have between now and the end of the season, although the opportunities have started to diminish. We're out of all the cup competitions, only the Champions League left, where I don't think Klopp's going to play him that much, barring some injury. And obviously, Bajcecic not playing every game. Do you play a Bajcecic away to Real Madrid? Is that someone that you want in the middle of the park against a Real Madrid team who are going to hound him, who are going to be on to him? Um, is he ready for that? You know, it, you don't want to throw him into the Lions then so early and then find out that, Oh, well, he wasn't ready for that. And I, I hear it sometimes in terms of some people say, yeah, that's where, you know, we saw Jack Wilshire for Arsenal up at, you know, Emirates Stadium against Barcelona, putting a monster performance. But, you know, injuries obviously just kind of curtailed, curtailed his career. And, you know, some players might take to it like Dr. Water. So, of course, it might just be a situation like that for Bajcecic. I guess we won't really know until that period comes. But do you want to throw him into that situation? Are we like Arsenal? Do we need to be, or should we be doing that in the first place? Do we not want to do what like Pep's done with Foden, where we blood them in, blood them in, blood them in until they're into a situation whereby you can't leave them out anymore because they've had that time, they've had that experience and been able to nurture. You've not worried about them having too many a run of bad games. You know, they might have like one, Foden probably had like one or two bad games in a row, for example. You're out of the team straight away, but then you're blooded back in. You're not just thrown away. A bit like what Klopp kind of does with, you know, Curtis Jones. You know, he might have two bad games and you never see the guy for like three, four weeks. So, you know, I just don't want to put too much pressure on the Bajcecic. But in regards to the Fabinho, you know, he, he's he's just... Yeah, I think I think I saw, you know, a lost possession and things like that, go, you know, and other stats, you know, before in regards to him. And I think he's lost more possession this season in less games in the Premier League than he did in the whole of last season. And I think he played 29 times last season. So that, you know, that worries me. That makes me think, oh, you know, this might be a player who really just isn't at it. Now, the whole team isn't at it. So, of course, like I said, it's not just him. We, I'm not going to look at him and think, yeah, it's just you. You're the reason. Why. No, it's, it's a team thing. It's a collective manager included. But at the same time, you are one of the worst performers that we do have in this current team alongside some other players. So, well, you're the worst, but there are other players who are also performing poorly as well this season. So it, it is just a question. It is just a question. It's a conversation. What do you guys do? Like, would you guys, let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? Should we sell someone like Fabinho? Do you keep Fabinho? Do you just wait and see? I'm not talking about now because we've only we you know we've got one day left until the transfer window is over. I don't see us selling him unless someone comes in with a monster bid, which I do not see happening. Um, so you know we are in a catch twenty two. Obviously we've been linked to Enzo, we've been linked to Jude, we've been linked to Caicedo. You know Caicedo specifically, you know someone who can play in that position. Maybe you look at someone like a Caicedo. You know, could potentially come in there. If you do then keep Fabinho, you at least got Caicedo, Fabinho and then Bajatic. You know, you've then got someone who's up and coming, who's, you know, starting to really imprint themselves onto the game, into the game itself. Then you've got someone who's experienced like a Fabinho, just needs to come in every now and again. Um, and then you've got Bajatic, someone who's really, really young um, and just needs the experience, but can also learn from these players. Do we switch Fabinho to a new position? I've seen quite a few people say that as well. Maybe he goes back into centre-back, potentially, you know, um, where obviously he needs the mobility regardless and he isn't really the quickest anyway, but defensively he might be a bit more sound and then maybe that might just be an option, you know, moving forward, potentially. It happens, you know, some players will drop back. You know, some players do just drop back into another position. You know, we saw Ryan Giggs as a flying winger for years at Manchester United. Moved into central midfield. Um, David Beckham, another winger for years, moved into central midfield. You know, we've seen players move into different positions as their careers move on. And as obviously their main, not main attribute, but just as certain things kind of start to wane a little bit, you know, just because of age, like any human being. So you have to learn to adapt. You have to learn to adjust. Will Klopp see that? Is that even a possibility? I have no idea. But there does need to be a conversation in regards to Fabinho. What do we do with him? Do you guys think we should keep him? Do you think we should sell him? Um, and if you do, who do you want to come in to replace these guys? Um, we already know that we're, we're kind of broke as it is. So, you know, choose wisely in terms of the player that you're thinking about. But yeah, I've just not been happy with Fabinho this season. Um, 
you know, I could have done this video, you know, a month ago, two months ago, uh, a week ago, two weeks ago, whatever. I could have done it, but, you know, prior to then. But, you know, after watching that game against Brighton back again, you know, I was just looking at Fabinho. And it, like I said, with Fabinho, Hendo, Curtis Jones and these guys coming onto the field, you really did see the drop off in level for Liverpool. And it was massive. It was absolutely massive. It was so glaring. You know, it was so glaringly obvious that, yeah, these guys, you cannot play these guys. And if you do, you need to pray that you're like four or five nil ahead so that they, when they're coming on, the impact isn't so heavy. As opposed to now, you're bringing them on in tight games that we're trying to win and they're just not able to cut it. You know, they're really just not able to cut it. Fabinho, late to tackles, you know, having players run past him easily. Um, you know, his mobility just isn't there. We saw the game against Crystal Palace, if you guys remember, a few months back, you know, the early part of the season. You know, Eze, you know, Zaha. I know these guys are quick anyway, of course, so they'd give quite a few few players problems. But that never seemed to be an issue for Fabinho before. He's come up against quick players for ages now. And you never really noticed that he wasn't that quick because he was able to get himself into the right position. He was able to show that, you know, his um, positional awareness was really good and his football IQ was really, really good. At the moment now, it, uh, whether his body is just not moving, whether he's just so dead on his feet and again, goes back to the style of play, goes back to the tactics that we use. Once it reaches a point, players just can't keep doing the same things over and over again. It's just borderline insanity. So, yeah, I think with Fabinho, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do, do we keep him? Do we sell him? If you do want to sell him, who would you like us to bring in to the team? Um, and then we'll just have to take it from there. We'll see how he goes between now and the end of the season. But, yeah, that's my video little chat conversation for today nice quick nice and short uh, for you guys this evening um make sure as i said that you're smashing that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already we are on the road to 250 subscribers as i said the jerry james show um, i'm hoping by the time this video is posted out we are even closer to the goal of a thousand subscribers we want to um thank each and every one of you who has subscribed already um so make sure if you haven't you need to get over there because you know, we're, ha we're having a lot of conversations. Um, you know, Liverpool being Liverpool being poor this season is going to be the reason why we're going to have even more conversations between now and the end of the season. We're going to see some more um, defeats. That, that's guaranteed between now, you know, and the end of the season. Um, so, of course, we're going to keep having these conversations. But at the end of the day, it's because we want the, you know, the best for our football club. We want our football club to be the best. You know, whatever, whichever way you look at it, Everyone wants their club to be successful. Everyone wants their club to be the ones winning the trophies and the Man Cities or the Man Uniteds or the Real Madrids or the Bayern Munichs, Barcelonas of this world, PSGs. We want to keep, we want to be, we want to be winning as well. You know, we spent a long time being nearly men, the bridesmaid. We spent a long time just being a team who are just there, a cup team. You know, we want to be out there challenging for the biggest honours. So we're going to keep having these conversations. You might not agree with us. You might not like what we say, but at least listen, at least listen. At least understand maybe the point of view that we're coming from. Um, and, you know, we, we can all sit here and have a conversation. But I've spoken too much. Guys, make sure you smash the like. Make sure you subscribe to the video. I'm G and I'm out.